Number five, suppose you have a coffee mug with a circular cross section and vertical sides, uniform radius. What is its inside radius if it holds 375 grams of coffee when filled to a depth of 7.5 centimeters? Assume the coffee has the same density as water. All right, so I mean, they're basically telling us that we need to know the density of water. All right, so why don't we write that down? So the density of water is about, is one uh, gram per cubic centimeter. Okay, all right, great. Now, the other piece of information they tell us is that when we fill, right, we're going to fill this coffee mug with some amount of water. Okay, obviously that water has a certain volume. Uh, what we do know, though, is we do know the weight of it, right? It said that it's filled with 375 grams of coffee. But remember, I'm just going to, instead of talking about coffee, I'm going to talk about water since it has the same density, all right? So we fill it with 375 grams of water. Knowing this, can I find the... Uh, volume and I don't know why there's a this right here should not be a two it's not per centimeter squared it's per centimeter cubed so just seeing if just seeing if you're paying attention of course um, so what we do know here is again to get back on track we do know the weight of such water and we do know the density of such water and therefore I can easily find the uh, volume of such water okay by simply using the density formula over here I notice the units are consistent between my mass unit there and my mass and my density. So I can just simply use this formula that density is equal to mass over volume. And what I can do is substitute or solve this thing for volume, right? I can say that V is then equal to the mass, which we know, divided by then the density, which we also know. So I'm going to leave this alone for right now because I'm just going to do a bunch of substitutions. Now, if I know the volume somehow... I need to find now the radius. So in my picture, here's the radius, okay? So I need to somehow find this R value. So what you're thinking is how in the world is volume then connected to radius? Oh, wait a minute, what's, what's the nature of this object? Oh, it's a basic cylinder, right? So we know that the volume of a cylinder is pi R squared H. Oh my goodness, and look at this, right? This basically tells us if we solve this thing for R, okay, divide out the pi and H from both sides, so we get R squared is equal to V over pi H, and now take the square root of both sides, right, to find R by itself, and what this tells us is that we need to know the volume and the height, and we do know the height, right? That's the whole point of the 7.5 uh, centimeter value they told us, okay? Now, we could convert everything here to uh, meters if we wanted. All right, we really don't need to. As long as the, as long as the uh, distance value here, okay, the centimeter correlates with the cubic distance value here, and the mass value there correlates and is the same as the mass value there, we don't have to do any such conversions. All right. So now all I'm going to do here is just simply now plug in the mass divided by the density in for my volume. So now it's going to be M. So really, I could do it like this now. Mass divided by density times pi times H. All right. Now, if we plug everything on in, the mass was 375. Okay. The density, let me give it a little curve there. The density was 1 times pi times uh, the height of 7.50. All right. And now when we plug that all into the calculator, what do we get? So square root of 375 divided by now parenthesis pi times 7.5. And we get 3.8, excuse me, 3.99. Yeah, so 3.99. I'm just looking at the sig figs. That looks fine. Uh, 3.99 uh, centimeters. Okay, just be careful with the unit. All right, if you use centimeters in your calculations here, you're centimeter gets spit out for the radius. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. All right, please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to helping you out on the next problem. Take care.